Egypt's population has just hit 110 million and it's growing fast at about 2% a year. This rapid growth is putting serious pressure on water resources. And by 2030, the country could face absolute water scarcity. This means less than 500 cubic meters of water per person each year. Agriculture, which uses 86% of Egypt's water, is the hardest hit. One solution to this problem is desalination, which turns salty or brackish water into something usable. This is where Ingazet comes in. They're leading the way with innovative, sustainable solutions that don't require farmers to pay anything up front. You've made a lot of promises. You've made a promise for equitable access. You've made a promise for zero capex. This was the first time these things were offered in Egypt. What was the market reception like? It was started early. The market wasn't ready at that time because there was a heavy subsidy on that. The basic foundation for the, for the business, it, we're very, very policy related industry. We're very much connected to the policy. So the market now is in a situation that is on the rise because of the the challenge that we see on the short term. At the back end of this challenge, there's a big opportunity where there is now a real price for this basic and foundation, uh, foundational commodity, which is energy and water. And there is a good price for the food, which is at the back end of that, enabling a lot of foreign direct investment that can make commercially viable investments. Give us a snapshot in figures how have you gone about decarbonization? How many liters of water have you provided? How much has been invested into this? We started at this very moment, I guess we're 13 years or 14 years of operations. All along the years, I guess we're having the biggest portfolio in the C&I sector and the renewables energy. That's around 63 megawatts of power between installations and developments that we're having as we speak. We are producing and uh, operating more than 50 million cubic meters of water. We have raised around 16, 17 million dollars of investment deployed so far on the ground. Our pipeline now um, at the 50 or to, uh, 50 of developed projects and our pipeline is around 250 million dollars. Desalination hasn't really taken off in Egypt yet because it's too costly. To change that, in Gazette's founders invested 17 million dollars into two major projects, sustainable agro villages and entrepreneurship parks. These projects, located in the Mughra and Dakhla Oasis, are transforming desert land into green and thriving farmland. So we aggregate to deliver economies of scale, give them the access to the markets through partnerships that we engage with them, with future contracts for agriculture with off-takers. We deliver technical support and capacity building for them to be able to comply to those standards, whether for export purposes, or to serve the local markets. So we needed to work on the demand side of the utility to deliver the comfort and de-risk the farming activities to smallholder farmers and to be able to invest in the utility at the back end for that. SAVE was basically two legs. The utility leg, which is power to water, and the agriculture leg that has to be compliant to deliver the right economics that is able to pay the utility at the back end for that. And the whole project is designed back to back in a financially engineered in a way that delivers value, commercially viable IRRs on the power side, the water side, and the agriculture side. When we talk about SAVE, it fulfills a lot of SDGs. Let's first delve into economic empowerment and, you know, good work. If we talk about SDGs, um, you know, uh, most of our projects cover 10 plus SDGs. Um, but we do have a specific framework for that. It's not that we list the SDGs to tick the boxes, that the, these are the projects and this is the SDGs. No, we do have a specific framework for that. Our overarching objective is no poverty. This is a key. And we do that through, if I ask you, how can you re reduce poverty? Millions of uh, reiterations that we can say. But we do have a specific way around that, which is having access to uh, clean, affordable energy through having access to clean water. Water is life. And that, to reach that, there are underlying drivers. That is innovation, industry innovation, uh, partnership for the goals. We're very much an uh, open company uh, in terms of partnerships that we do. We make sure that, as a developer, we integrate the different uh, relevant partnerships into our projects so that we deliver something whole 
and bigger than a single company. It's, it's, it's having synergies of partnerships. It's an important step because 95% of farming in Egypt is done by small-scale farmers. These farmers already face tough economic and environmental challenges, so they need solutions that go beyond just money. And ultimately need to, to make the economics happy and the environment happier. So the way, uh, the pathway and the blueprint we envision uh, to resolve this matter at Ingazet uh, is through a holistic approach where we mul bundle multiple disciplinary engineering fields to achieve the goal because you cannot tackle it with singular direction. So we tackle our projects with uh, urban planning and architectural engineering, uh, renewables engineering, water and hydrological engineering, agronomical engineering, very important for the nexus to achieve this impact. And no less important is the financial engineering that makes this workable, attractive economics from the investment side and from the operational side also by our customers. There are multiple water desalination technologies. Have any of them sort of played a major role in Egypt specifically due to our environment? Has there been a clear leader in this area? In general, we, we, we are agnostic towards certain brand or certain technology. Each project dictates the, the needful. And on a white sheet of paper, we design what is needed or required for the project, addressing the challenges starting from, for agriculture from the crop water requirement and how to get the least cost of water and the least cost of kilowatt produced. RO, reverse osmosis, is showed really good prominence and being an attractive and investable grade technology. Of course, desalination isn't perfect. One big challenge is brine, a salty byproduct that can harm ecosystems if it isn't handled properly. That we deal with it very much environmentally friendly in a way that does not bring the high salinity of the water back again to the aquifers through different techniques that we use, evaporation ponds and a lot of isolations and mechanical dispatch of, the, of these kind of salts in a way that prevents completely any environmental impact on desalination technology. Despite these challenges, there's a lot to be optimistic about. Egypt's green tech sector is thriving, and Ingazet recently signed a $50 million deal with Empower New Energy to fund a 40 megawatt solar project portfolio. This investment doesn't just focus on renewable energy. It will also give a big boost to their solar for water business, helping tackle the water crisis in a meaningful way.